Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the molecular mechanism of the main psychoactive ingredient in marijuana, tetrahydrocannabinol, also known as THC. Before I delve into the mechanism of THC, I want to first give a bit of background about cannabinoids. First, our body contains an endocannabinoid system. This system involves molecules produced by your brain and body that serve a variety of functions. Cannabinoids produced by your body are called endocannabinoids. The most well-studied endocannabinoid is called anandamide. Second, there are molecules produced by plants that mimic endocannabinoids in your body and can interact with the endocannabinoid system. These plant-based cannabinoids are called phytocannabinoids. The most well-studied phytocannabinoid is tetrahydrocannabinol, which comes from the marijuana plant. Third, there are also cannabinoids made by humans in labs for the purposes of studying the cannabinoid system. These man-made cannabinoids are called synthetic cannabinoids. A wide variety of these exist, and WIN55212-2 is, is an example of one of these. What all these cannabinoid compounds have in common is that they bind to and activate cannabinoid receptors. There are five known cannabinoid receptors, with the CB1 receptor being the most well studied. Cannabinoid receptors can have a variety of effects on the mind and body, including, but not limited to, euphoria, alterations in food intake, metabolism, stress, and pain. Today I will be specifically talking about the mechanism of THC and how it alters neuronal activity. Your brain is made up of many cells called neurons, which connect to and pass signals to one another. Neurons receive signals from other neurons through their dendrites. Signals received at the dendrites are passed along the neuronal membrane towards the end of the cell, called the axon terminal. These axon terminals are then able to pass the signal on to the next cell. Before I talk about how THC affects neurons, I will first describe the endocannabinoid system. When a neuron receives an excitatory signal from another neuron, its membrane becomes more positively charged. This charge moves along the membrane towards the axon terminal. In the axon terminal, there are neurotransmitters that are stored in vesicles waiting for a signal to be released. This signal comes from voltage-gated calcium channels, which are normally closed but will open if, when the membrane is more positively charged. The opening of the channel allows calcium to flow into the cell which then initiates a signaling cascade that results in the neurotransmitter vesicle fusing to the membrane. This results in the release of the neurotransmitter that can bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. This results in an increase in signaling on the postsynaptic side. However, neurons need to control this signaling so that they are not overactivated. To provide feedback to the presynaptic neuron, the cell uses the endocannabinoid system. Endocannabinoid synthesis enzymes present on the postsynaptic membrane can detect when signaling is too high and provide negative feedback to the presynaptic neuron. Meanwhile, the presynaptic neuron contains cannabinoid receptors that allows it to respond to this negative feedback. When endocannabinoid synthesis enzymes produce endocannabinoids, they travel backwards and bind to cannabinoid receptors. Cannabinoid receptor activation then initiates a signaling cascade that blocks the ability of calcium to induce neurotransmitter release. As a result, the signaling on the postsynaptic cell is brought down to normal levels. Now when you take marijuana, THC will mimic endocannabinoids and bind to the endocannabinoid receptor. This results in decreased signaling in the postsynaptic neuron even though there is no excessive signaling occurring. This results in an overall decrease in neurotransmitter signaling in the postsynaptic neuron. So the ultimate effect of activation of cannabinoid receptor by THC is that it reduces neuronal signaling. This mechanism is how it exerts many of its effects on the brain. In follow-up videos, I will describe how this mechanism of reducing neuronal signaling leads to some of marijuana's effects, such as those on stress and pain. In conclusion, neurons send signals with neurotransmitters. Excessive neurotransmitter signaling triggers endocannabinoid synthesis. 
and neuconabinoids bind to CB1 receptors on presynaptic neurons, and CB1 receptor activation inhibits neurotransmitter release. THC also binds to CB1 receptors and will also inhibit neurotransmitter release. Thank you for watching. Sources to all the things I discussed in this video can be found in the description below.